What is up guys, Jay here and welcome to my Dota 2 channel. In this video I'm going to be going over the now popular Ring of Basilius, Headdress and Buckler and when you should buy them and on what heroes. These items have been absolutely amazing for the past few patches, especially in the laning stage. Just having that one item to give you the benefit in the lane can just basically win you the lane as long as you're not feeding. So let's start off with Ring of Basilius. So let's go to learn items at Ring of Basilius. So, Ring of Basilius grants 1.4 mana regeneration to allies in a radius of 1200. So, in a 1200 radius circle around your hero, the allies, so basically the creeps and the heroes on your team will get that benefit. So, with uh, Ring of Basilius, it's very beneficial for heroes that depend on a lot of mana usage and can use it well in the laning stage. So, heroes like Lena, Bristleback, Rubik, Snapfire, which are all popular right now. These heroes want to spam their spells to basically kill the other heroes in the lane to win the lane or just to farm or just to be annoying. So say like Lena can just spam Light Strike Array to then hit the um, enemy carry or off Lena that's going to go for Elastic. You can guarantee that stun and keep spamming it as well as deny whatever creeps that that hero's gone for. Bristleback benefits from it by being able to spam his quills as much as possible. It's sort of like how... Um, if you look into games now, Cottle and Bristleback are very good in lane as a combo together because Cottle's not only reducing the cooldown of the Bristleback's quills, he's also giving the mana for it. Ring of Basilius is the same concept, but he's providing the mana of a, a certain duration. Well, not a certain duration, it's just permanent. If you're in the area of that 1200 radius, you're giving your Bristleback some mana region, which is 1.4, which is actually quite significant in a lane, you just don't notice it. Um, Snapfire likes to spam out its Q, just spam spam Q, do a lot of damage, get that extra 50% damage if you're close up range. Uh, Rubik can spam Fear Bolt, a really annoying spell to lane against because of the um, attack damage reduction that gets apl applied to you when Rubik uses Fear Bolt on you. Uh, so yeah, carrying Ring, Ring of Basilius throughout the laning stage can be really good and it can build into some really nice items later on in the game. So, Vladimir's Offering is one of the best items in the game, especially for the building aura for your team. So, Vladimir's Offering gives plus 5 attributes to you, but the passive effect grants 25% lifesteal, 1.5 mana regeneration, and free armor to your nearby allies, again in that 1200 radius. So, this is really nice, just bulking up your team, giving them lifesteal, giving them armor, and that mana regen, just to benefit them in the fights, and you might actually have an advantage over your team enemy team if you've got this Vladimir's offering and they don't because you're getting the lifesteal which might keep your carry alive so usually Vladimir's offerings bought on say like off lane heroes sort of like Mars sometimes Bristleback uh, Centaur maybe right so another item that Ring of Basilius builds into is Veil of Discord Veil of Discord gives plus nine in all attributes and the active of it is magic weakness so bear in mind this isn't a passive like Vladimir's offering so this is just a correction. So, Veil of Discord casts a 600 radius blast that causes enemies to take 20% increased damage from spells. Originally in the video I said it only increased magic damage, but I've corrected myself. It is in fact 20% increased damage from all spells. Magical damage, physical damage and pure damage get buffed by 20%. So bear in mind, Timbersaw with a Veil could be absolutely OP. So the range of it is 1000 range and it lasts for 16 seconds and again you get the Basilius Aura from the Ring of Basilius itself which is the 1.5 mana region in a 1200 radius. So Veil of Discord is really nice on heroes such as Pugna which can be played in the like, mid lane or any role basically but usually it's built on like Pugna mid because that extra 20% increased damage from your spells can be enough to just burst down like any carry hero if that Pugna has got levels over him. Heroes like Terrorblade are very weak against Veil of Discord because he's just weak to burst in general and if you're increasing that burst damage he's just going to die even quicker. It's ridiculous how much damage you can actually do with it. So next up is Headdress. Headdress is honestly I think the best out of all three of these support items from Ring of Basilius, Headdress and Buckler. Just because of what it does and the fact that you don't really notice it but it's such an amazing beneficial effect. So, much like Ring of Basilius and a 1200 radius around you, you're granting a passive ability which grants 2 health regen to your allies. Not 1.4 mana regen, but 2 health regen. So, unlike using the Tango which provides 7 health regen for only 16 seconds, 
you get this permanently so long as you're carrying the headdress in your inventory. Yeah, bear in mind you get three tangles within a pack, which provides 48 seconds of 7 health regen. But think of how long the learning stage is for how long the entire match is. Headdress is always there healing you, whereas you won't always have tangles, and you also don't even have to activate the headdress. Think of what the item builds into as well. Headdress is a ring of regen and a recipe which also builds into Helm of Dominator, Mechanism and Pipe of Insight. All three of these are absolutely amazing for your team and just in general team fights overall in the game. Mechanism and Pipe are commonly bought items and are very useful for countering enemies and assisting your team. A burst AoE heal from Mechanism can sometimes win your team a fight and the magic projection from the pipe active can also be the difference from the enemy bursting your cores with their magic damage or them surviving the magic burst damage to be, to be able to turn around the fight. Besides the actors of the items being useful, don't ignore the passive effects for the items. Like, Helm of the Dominator gives 7 attributes, it also gives you the active dominate effect, but also bear in mind the passive effects. Increase nearby ally hero and player units base damage by 20% and health regen by 4.25 and has a 50% bigger effect on player units. Which is absolutely amazing, like for an item that's so cheap, can give you an extra 20% base damage on all your allied heroes and creeps. It's ridiculous. Mechanism. The active restores 275 health to allied units in a 1200 radius, again the 1200 radius is important. Also, passive effect of the headdress, which is a 2 health regen. And the restore does not affect units that have been affected by restore in the last 25 seconds, so multiple mechanisms won't work. But, again, 275 burst heal in a team fight is absolutely amazing. That's just like negating one nuke in the game that's been used on your team. And last but not least, Pipe of Insight. Gives a shield that blocks 400 magic damage to all nearby allies. So that's buildings, creeps, and heroes. In the 1200 radius again. Also the passive insight aura. Gives allied units 2 health regen and 10% magic resistance. So it's like an upgraded headdress buff. With that 10% extra magic resistance. So just another correction here. Buckler is an item that gives the passive buckler aura. Grants 2.5 armor to allied player units. So originally I said this applied to the creeps and buildings, but it doesn't. I've just double checked it. So the 2.5 armor only applies to heroes and hero units such as summons. So like Beastmaster creeps, Ench creeps, Chain creeps, Dominator creeps, stuff like that. Buckler's great for providing armor to heroes that lack armor or have very little. For example, Tiny, Phoenix, heroes like that, that just don't start with any base armor. You also want to be buying it against heroes in lane such as Ricky, Phantom Assassin, Phantom Lancer, anyone that does physical damage. If you buy a Buckler, it seriously negates most of their damage. Buckler's armor could be the difference of you dying or staying alive in the laning stage, so bear in mind what you're against in lane and what allies you're laning with, or just basically yourself. If you've got no armor, and you're against a physical lineup, buy a buckler. It'll save your life, trust me. Buckler also builds into a salt cuirass, which is an amazing item usually bought on carriers in the late game because it provides 30 attack speed to yourself, 10 armor to yourself, 5 in all attributes, but also the passive again grants 25 attack speed and 5 armor to nearby allied units and structures and decreases nearby enemy unit and structures armor by 5. So you're buffing your towers and you're debuffing the enemy towers which just makes pushing even faster because the less armor they have the more damage they'll take and also again reducing the enemy's armor by five in an entire team fight within a 1200 radius again is absolutely amazing if you're in the middle of the fight you're going to be a tanky god doing a lot of attacks whilst also reducing their armor so you're doing more damage to them and they're doing less damage to you because you've got that actual armor on yourself and your allies have got the five armor from the passive aura. Buckler also builds into again Vladimir's offering. See how the two items build into one? Vladimir's offering if you just want some mega value from getting two of the most valuable items in the early game 
You want Ring of Basilius, a buckler, more of your mass for the lifesteal, and then a recipe to build an item which is only cost 2,200, but again, 25% lifesteal to everyone on your team and creeps, 1.5 mana regen, and free armor. Free armor, bear that in mind, right? That's buckler gives 2.5, just upgrading it to Vladimir's offering gives you free armor. And what did the assault cuirass give us? Only five. So for even less than half the cost, you're only losing two armor from a passive ability, which can be absolutely amazing in fights. Right, so in summary, buy a Ring of Basilius. If you or your laning partners need mana to spam spells to win your lane or just to be annoying against the enemy cores. So if you're against some right clicking core that likes to last it a lot and you're playing something like Rubik, you can just spam your Fear Bolt to reduce their attack damage which will make them miss their last hits because they'll think they've got more damage than they actually do. Headdress, I believe you should buy on every position 5 hero, every single one, just buy a headdress no matter what you're against. No matter what you're with, what hero you're playing, what your allies are playing, just buy a headdress on a position 5, for the love of God. The, the 2 health regen to you and your laning partner can be absolutely amazing. And if you're playing position 5, that means you're with your carry hero, which is usually the position 1. The guy that wants to be greedy, get kills, get farm mainly from killing creeps, and wants to stay in the lane as long as possible to kill them creeps and get all the levels that he can. To then move on to the jungle or enemy towers to farm them. You can also buy this on position 4 or an offlaner. A very important thing about headdress is if you're an offlaner and you're going to build something like a pipe of insight or maybe greaves later on in the game because mechanism upgrades into greaves you can also think about buying headdress at level 1 to go into the lane stage. If you're buying a headdress on the offlaner make sure your position 4 isn't buying a headdress because then you've got two headdresses and the ability doesn't stack. So if you're buying a headdress on the offlaner, tell your position 4 to buy a buckler or a basilius, because then you'll both benefit from two different effects. And last but not least, again, buckler. Buy a buckler if you're against physical heroes in the lane. Or if you know that their entire lineup is quite physical damage based, bear in mind you can build the Vlads for your team, or you can get an assault cuirass, mainly if you're a core hero. Vladimir's offering you can pretty much buy on every single hero on any position. It's just that valuable and that good that it's worth getting. If this video was helpful at all, please click on the like button, hit subscribe and ding the notification bell so you can watch out for when I actually upload next. I'll be uploading Dota 2 related content on this channel alone and that's all you'll see on this channel is because I want to primarily focus this channel on Dota 2. I'm going to be trying to make guides to help people out. I'm going to be helping friends out that have requested videos that I make just to make sense of what things need to be done in games to win the actual games, how you need to play, what items you need to buy, what heroes you need to be choosing in certain metas and how to use them. So if you like that idea and that kind of content, then yeah, please watch out for my next upcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching and you can find me on Twitch at XJAEXZ. All the links are down below, make sure you follow me.